Another new summer season of anime is about to begin, and with that comes a whole ton of shows. Now here at the channel, I decided to pick out 10 series that I recommend you'd watch. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Gio here. Let's get on to it. This list is in no particular order. I went through so many titles. It was a little bit hard to choose 10 shows uh, that I think you might want to check out. I picked a little bit of everything. However, there are two returning shows from the previous season, and that's because there's enough episodes to warrant me recommending it. So enough of that. Let's get started with the actual list. The first one I'm going to talk about is Ms. Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. The wacky Dragon Maid is back again. This is a very wholesome show, and it's often mislabeled simply because of the etchy humor, fan service -y jokes, but there's a really heartwarming, wholesome story underneath, especially Toru working once again as Kobayashi's maid, as well as the other dragons, Kana, Lukoa, Fafnir, Elma, and just so many other wonderful characters in this series that you know, it's mostly a comedy and there are fantastic elements because you do have uh, dragons involved and they're able to shape shift into humans. But you also have that wonderful slice of life element that I really enjoy in shows where you can just make uh, funny, awesome, wholesome adventures out of mundane life uh, moments and you can inject a little bit of humor and wholesomeness into it. And yeah, it just so happens to have a few little uh, fan service bits here and there, but that's all right, don't worry about it. Now I know last year when Crunchyroll debuted their uh, originals programs, some shows were a little hit or miss, but for the most part, I enjoyed a good portion of what I saw. I think this is something worth checking out and it is of course Fena, Pirate Princess. Now this is a collab between Crunchyroll and Adult Swim with Production IG. This stars Fena Hotman, and I do apologize for butchering names, but she remembers little about her childhood. Orphaned and raised as a servant in a brothel, her life changes when she escapes to an island of pirates where she discovers the truth behind her family. With Fena being the only one able to unlock her family's secrets and a formidable crew of female pirates on her tail, she must take her place of captain of her samurai crew for a high seas adventure. I love when you're able to do stories like this. It looks uh, really cool. I enjoy the trailers for it and it's streaming on Crunchyroll, so I do recommend checking it out. Uh, I think it's going to be worth your time if you like what seems to be historical fiction mixed with a little samurai action, action adventure, the high seas, of course the element of pirates and all that stuff. I think you have a winner on your hands. The next series I want to recommend is The Aquatope on White Sand. A former idol goes to the island of Okinawa and finds a new life helping a struggling aquarium from shutting down. This is from Progressive Animation Works. I'm a huge fan of them. I recently enjoyed Apare Ranman, for example, and I'm very much looking forward to this. Not only do I like slice of life shows, I like where you can get stories like this that rely more on drama and human interaction and the fact that you're able to animate that stuff really makes it extra special in my opinion. It looks gorgeous. Can't wait to check out Aquatope. The Great Yahi Will Not Be Defeated. That's my next pick on this list. It is a comedy series starring The Great Yahi, the Dark Realm's second in command, cuts a frightening figure, feared and revered by all. But when a run-in with a magical girl results in the destruction of the precious mana crystal, the Dark Realm falls, transporting the newly puny and powerless Yahi to the human world. Unfortunately, plotting the revival of the Dark Realm from a cramped, crumbling one-room apartment is no easy feat when you have rent to pay and a job to keep. So this is based on the manga of the same name and it is adapted by the folks at Silverlink. I'm not the biggest fan of Silverlink and their shows, however, I do want to give it a shot. The premise sounds kooky and wacky enough 
where you have elements of uh, slice of life mixed with supernatural stuff, you know, them being uh, demon lords of another darker realm, stuff like that. And just that you're able to get something comedic out of it is fun. It reminds me of uh, like uh, Dropkick My Devil, where it really has this mix of the bizarre with slapstick. And I think Yahisama, as it's known in Japan, uh, shows potential. It looks cool. I kind of want to recommend it just on that alone. Now, if you know me and this channel, I'm a big fanboy for Studio Mappa, and their latest series that I want to recommend is, of course, the Idaten Deities No Only Peace. As demons wake from their great slumber, descendants of battle gods called Idaten, as well as humanity, get ready to fight back. Look, I don't know much about it, but it's Mappa. They're killing it as of late. All In all their 10 years in the business, I have loved almost every single show that they've done. And uh, yeah, this is a really interesting seinen type show with demons and fantasy aspects. The color palette on this thing is insane. Just for that alone, I really recommend checking out Ida 10. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Eventually, I will get back to this and review it. But it looks really stunning, in my honest opinion. Worth checking out, I think. For this next one, you know, there's always that simple and kind of hilarious premise that gets to me. Whether it's somebody re reincarnated and essentially starting out a laundry uh, for a fantasy world, or you have... Uh, characters involved in farming or commerce or whatever it may be just the task of taking like mundane activities from our world and injecting that into a fantasy setting with all the tropes and the characters and the creatures and all that I think it's pretty fun and this is no exception I usually enjoy shows like this this is drugstore in another world the slow life of a cheap pharmacist Reiji Kirio was a corporate wage slave who did nothing but work all day, every day. On a typical day of walking to work with a hollow look on his face, he suddenly found himself in the forest of another world. Oh, this must be one of those isekai reincarnations people keep talking about. The two skills he has are appraise and drug discovery. Those don't sound too impressive. Well, whatever. Except these turn out to be particularly overpowered skills. He's able to produce the healing medicines that were sorely lacking in the world, one after another, leading to an overnight fortune. No one will ever force him to work like a slave again. He decides to adopt a deliberately slow life and opens a drugstore. And so a story about following the slow life philosophy while running a drugstore in another world begins. With that description, I mean, you already know what you're getting yourself into. I like the idea that and yeah, it's another isekai series. I know, I know. You're probably sick and tired of hearing the word isekai and watching all those random isekai shows that aren't that great. But eventually, one or two of them hit the nail on what makes the genre fun. And it's taking the idea of a character that doesn't really have it made in our world, and he gets another shot. Because, you know, wish fulfillment. That's a thing. I'm not a fan of gaming mechanics inserted into fantasy settings, like they'll have access to abilities and you see a drop down menu like it's an RPG. I'm not a fan of that because it sort of breaks the illusion for me of a character being, uh, you know, spirited away to another world. I, I sort of want them to land there. You remember the old school 90s isekai before isekai was a thing where they just land there and they have nothing. And they have to learn everything from that world and don't necessarily rely on a Deus Ex uh, thing like having a drop down menu with abilities like appraise and stuff like that. You, you learn that naturally within that world and not sort of fourth wall breaking, if that makes any sense. But still, I like the idea that instead of doing the big old, uh, you know, we're going to defeat the demon lord and save the world and all that or maybe it's a comedic twist, here you have something so mundane that he's using his appraisal and drug discovery to actually build a drugstore, which is needed in a fantasy setting that doesn't have the conveniences of the 21st century. Next up on the list, Remake Our Life. This is a comedic series 
that I think has a wholesome potential. Hashiba Kiyoya is a 28-year-old game developer. With his company going bankrupt and him losing his job, he returns to his hometown. Looking at the success of creators of his age, he finds himself regretting his life decisions as he lay distressed on his bed. But when he opens his eyes, he finds that he has traveled 10 years back to the time before he entered college. Will he finally make things right? This is a story about a failed person who is given a second opportunity to follow his dreams. I'm going into this without knowing. I, I know it's based on a light novel, but I'm going in, uh, at this completely blind, just on the premise alone, which I immediately loved. I think this is one of my favorite plots from everything that I'll discuss in this video. Just the fact that, yeah, wish fulfillment and you have a character that's getting a magical second opportunity, but who wouldn't want that in real life? And I look forward to older characters. I'm so used to, I mean, I've been watching anime since 1996 or 97, something like that. It's been a while, it's been some years. And I get it, the main demographic is a younger crowd, but you, from time to time, you want to see characters out of that trope, out of that norm, and to have an almost 30-year-old, uh, almost close to my age, uh, it's a, a breath of fresh air. And yeah, there's time travel, the hijinks, and all that stuff. So you already know some of the story beats and the tropes and all that. But still, uh, I want to root for the character, so we'll see how the story progresses. Now, I know, I know, don't get mad, but I wanted to include this because the first 12 episodes were simply breathtaking. I loved them so much. And this is Tokyo Revengers. We already had the first half of this season. This is the story of Takemichi Hanagaki, a freelancer that's reached the absolute pits of despair in his life. He finds out that the only girlfriend he ever had in his life that he dated in middle school had been killed by the ruthless Tokyo Manji gang. The day after hearing about her death, he's standing on the station platform and ends up being pushed over onto the tracks by a herd of people. He closes his eyes thinking he's about to die, but when he opens his eyes back up, he somehow had gone back in time 12 years. So he's back and he's going to try and fix things. And if you've watched the first half of the show so far, you know that there's a lot going back and forth in the timeline, trying to prevent, um, you know, Hinata's death and fix the problems with the gangs and all that stuff. And just when you think they've got things uh, resolved, they throw another plot twist at you and things change dramatically. And where we left off as of me making this video, is uh, really shocking and harrowing, and I cannot wait to see how these characters bounce back. I cannot recommend it enough. If you've seen the uh, time traveling series uh, Erased, it's like that, but in the uh, modern era with gangs and a lot of cool pompadours. I do wholeheartedly recommend Tokyo Revengers. Another cheat on this list, of course, I had to do it to your eternity, it is one of my favorite ongoing manga, and the anime to me has been knocking it out of the park. A really stellar job from Brain Space. They've done a, an amazing job at reproducing uh, the manga and what made it so special. You have all these wonderful characters and a really interesting sci-fi story, but at heart, it's more about life and the meaning of it and friends and family and the journey that we go through and the journey that is life. Obviously it's hidden behind uh, elements of science fiction and drama and uh, really cool visuals with characters displaying uh, epic abilities, fighting the knockers and all that fun stuff. But at its core, it's really a beautiful examination of what it means to live and uh, keep moving in life in all you know adversity and, and challenges all that entails and how do we move forward and the bonds that we make with other people uh, how you form these bonds with family and friends and how that shapes you as the person you're destined to become things like that are explored into your eternity I don't want to spoil anything but I do recommend watching it uh, it's only a 20 episode season 
We've already seen the first 12, if I remember correctly. I am including it in the summer listing and hopefully you guys check it out if you haven't already. Last but not least, we wrap things up with The Detective is Already Dead. When the story begins without its hero, Kimihiko Kimizuka has always been a magnet for trouble and intrigue. For as long as he can remember, he's been stumbling across murder scenes or receiving mysterious cases to transport. When he met Siesta, a brilliant detective fighting a secret war against an organization of pseudo-humans, he couldn't resist the call to become her assistant and join her on an epic journey across the world. Until a year ago, that is. Now he's returned to a life that is normal and tepid by comparison, knowing the adventure must be over. After all, the detective is already dead. I don't know too much about it, but I like the animation style, I like the premise, I want a good detective story, and the visuals itself look really awesome. I am looking forward to this uh, and seeing all the plot twists and turns, because if you're involving detectives and murder and conspiracies and all that fun stuff and pseudo-humans, what could possibly go wrong? So there you go guys, 10 shows that I recommend for the summer 2021 season. If you're not watching these shows and you're watching something else, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, I will be reviewing more shows beyond these 10. I typically do seasonal reviews on this channel, typically a live stream. So look forward to that. It won't be at the end of the three month journey, uh, probably in the halfway point or something like that. I will do a, a spoiler free live stream. So look forward to that on the channel. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Stay safe out there. God bless. I will catch all of you on our next episode.